Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects of the western blotting in this particular lecture and uh, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about how you can be able to separate the molecule based on the molecular weight in the, uh, in the technique which is called as the SDS page. So, we have discussed about the how to prepare the gel, how to cast the gels, how to uh, run the gel, how to perform the stacking and so on. And then at the end we have also discussed about how to, uh, how to uh, uh, stain the gels and how you can be able to visualize the pattern. If you want to use these gels for western blotting then you are not supposed to stain these gels, instead you can actually be put it into the transfer. So, now in the uh, this particular lecture we are going to discuss about how to perform the western blotting. So, now we assume that your stacking your gel is ready with the uh, protein result and then you can be able to use these gels for performing the western blotting. So, in a western blotting what you have is uh, so, so is a step 1 you have are going to resolve the sample onto a SDS page so that you are going to see a pattern of the gel. And now you are going what you are going to do is you are going to transfer these onto a nitrocellulose membrane right and then you are actually going to do a primary treatment, secondary treatment uh, and ultimately you are going to use the suitable substrate to see the bands. Now let us uh, talk about the uh, step number 1. So, step number 1 you have already we have already discussed in our previous lecture that how you can be able to resolve the sample onto the SDS page. Now, we will start discussing about the step number 2. So, for step number 2 onwards, what are the materials required? You are actually going to require the following materials. You require uh, E. coli cell expressing GFP. So, this is the sample actually, this is the sample what you require for doing the western blotting. Then you require the protein standard markers, you require the transfer buffers, you require a transfer membrane such as 0.45 micrometer nitrocellulose membrane or the PVDF membrane, you require a plastic tray, you require spatula, you require the blotting sheets, so 3 mm thick cellulose blotting sheets, then you require the semi dry electro blotting uh, units, then you require reagents for performing the electrophoresis, you require the anti GFP antibody that is the primary antibodies and then you require the anti rabbit IgG HRP and then you also require the developing reagents such as the chemi reagents or the western blotting. So, uh, as far as the procedure is concerned in the step 1 you are going to prepare the samples. So, preparation of the sample depends on the sample type. For the tissue, for solid tissue such as tumor or whole liver or brain it is first mechanically been broken down into the individual cell using a blender homogenizer or bisonications, once the individual cells are obtained it is being processed as described. For cells, individual cells are incubated with the lysis buffer containing detergent along with the protease and phosphatase in the butter cocktail to protect the sample from the degradations. And then uh, step 2 you are going to do the electrophoresis of the sample, so uh, this anyway we have discussed uh, in the previous lecture. Then in the step 3 you are going to do the transfer of the protein gel onto the blotting membranes. So, this can be done uh, two ways, uh, one is uh, in two steps, uh, first is the preparation of the transfer membrane and the second is the assembly of transfer op operators. So, cut the membrane of the same size as gel right, so suppose you have a gel of this size then you can actually be able to cut the membrane of the same size or slightly bigger the size actually. Because the nitrocellulose membranes are uh, costlier, so you should not be little careful with the size because you should not take very big so that you are going to waste. Then uh, here you have the variations, if you are using the nitrocellulose membrane the place the membrane in the transfer buffer and observe that the liquid was wicking the with the membrane areas appear as white spot need the special intentions right. So, when you are actually going to soak these membrane into the transfer buffer you what you are going to see is that some portion is going to be remain dry. So, it has to be submerged completely so that it, it should not show you any white patches it should just show you the clean membrane. Then for the PVDF membrane it actually going to be require a additional step of charging so that you should be able to uh, convert the PVDF membrane because the PVDF membrane or polyvinyl dihydrofluoride membranes 
are hydrophobic in nature. So, they will not going to bind the protein molecules. Instead, you are supposed to convert or impart a charge onto the membrane so that they will be actually going to attract the protein molecules. So, we, that you can, are going to do is by immersing the membrane into 100 percent ethanol for 15 to 20 minutes. So, when you immerse the methanol a membrane into a 100 percent methanol, it is actually going to give you the, it is going to react with the membrane and it is going to give a polar uh, environment. Then you decant the membrane uh, methanol and submerge the membrane into a transfer wafer for additional 10 to 30 minutes and that is actually going to do the same. It is going to make the membrane suitable for transfer activities. Then the uh, you are going to do the assembly of the transfer cassettes. So, remove the stacking gel from the page and equilibrate the gel into a transfer buffer for 10 to 15 minutes. This means uh, you are going to have a stacking gel right. So, you are going to have a stacking gel. So, what you are supposed to do because the stacking gel is not required you can just cut this stacking gel and you can only use the resolving gel because the protein bands are only going to be present onto a stacking gel. So, unnecessarily why should use this portion because otherwise you are supposed to waste the some amount of nitrocellulose membrane. Then pair uh, place a pair of blotting sheets uh, which are already been soaked into the transfer buffer onto the anodic plate usually this plate is black in color ok. So, just keep the two one pair of the blotting sheets onto the black plate. Uh, then you place the transfer membrane on top of the blotting sheets and remove the trapped air by rolling the test tube or the glass rod right. So, you are going to have a glass rod and that glass rod you should roll it onto the uh, onto this uh, membrane. So, that you know, all the trapped air between the blotting sheets and the membrane can be removed. Then you place the gel on top of the membrane and gently remove the trapped air bubble by rolling the test tube or the glass rod. Then you place the another blotting sheets already saturated with the glass rod buffer on top of the on the top and remove the trapped air by rolling the test tube or the glass rod and finally keep the cathode rate usually the red color and tight the transfer buffer by the four screws. So, you are going to actually having a four screws uh, on top of the four corners. Remember when you are doing the screwing uh, it should be uh, longitudinally which means if you are doing it 1, 2, 3, 4 your 1 and 3 should be screwed together and 2 and 4 should be screwed together. So, that you should not have the uh, unbalanced you should not have a uh, any kind of uh, uh, you know the any kind of pressure into this because if you do it 1 and 2 then your this portion is actually going to be having a some kind of pressure and as a result it may actually take up some air. Then you are going to transfer the protein from the gel to the membrane. So, place the transfer cassette into the tank filled with the transfer buffer, connect the transfer operator to the power supply unit and apply constant voltage for 1 hour. After the transfer disassemble the whole cassette and carefully remove the transfer membrane and check the protein transfer by the bond shoe screen. Use a pencil and label the different lanes. And then you are going to have the step number 4, the step number 4 you are going to do the blocking. So, wash the membrane with distilled water to remove any remaining point shoe stain. Put the membrane in blocking buffer containing the 5 percent skim milk uh, or 5 percent BSA for the detection of the phospho, phospho proteins. So, if you are doing it for the normal protein then you can actually be able to use the 5 percent skim milk uh, as a blocking agent. But if you are doing it for the specific proteins such as the phosphoproteins or the glycoproteins and other kinds of proteins then you should do use the BSA because then uh, because the skim milk has lot of uh, alkaline phosphatase. So, that may actually uh, you know destroy the dam or damage the samples. Then you have the probing. So, in western blotting probing can be done in two ways a two step probing and the one step probing. So, in a two step probing in two step probing scheme the membrane is first probed with the primary antibody to recognize the protein of interest. So, uh, and then membrane is probed with the primary antibody with an appropriate dilution for 1 hour at room temperature. Membrane is washed with buffer containing non ionic detergent Triton X 100 
and reprobe with another antibody directed against the primary antibody. The secondary antibody is coupled with an enzyme either HRP or the alkaline phosphatase or a fluorescent dye. Washed membrane is incubated with another secondary antibody with an appropriate dilution for 1 hour at room temperature. Membrane is washed with buffer containing non any detergent Triton X100 and developed. Use of the two ant different antibody increases the sensitivity as well as giving flexibility to plan the multiple probing. Uh, then you also have one step probing. In one step probing, the primary antibody contains enzyme or fluorescent label for detection. One step probing is not very common into the western blotting. Once you are done with the probing, you can actually be able to develop the probe blot. So, uh, step 6 is the blot development. So, there are uh, multiple ways to develop the blot and detect the protein present onto the membrane. So, you are going to have the different types of reagents, you can actually have the chromogenic reagents or you can also have the luminescent reagents. So, in the chromogenic reagents uh, you can have the depending upon the en enzymes. For example, HRP you can actually be able to use the 4 chloro naphthol or DAB or TMB and uh, the all of these uh, reagents are actually going to be uh, give you the colors. So, for example, 4 chloronephthol it is the oxidized product is going to form the purple color uh, precipitate. Dab and nickel chloride it is going to form the brown color precipitate and TMB it is actually going to form the dark purple stain. Similarly, if it is the enzyme is alkaline phosphatase, you, but you then you can use the BCIP and BT and BCIP hydrolyzes product in indigo precipitate after oxidation with NBT. If it is luminescent uh, substrates then you can for the HRP based system you can use the luminol and hydrogen peroxide and oxidized luminol gives the uh, blue light whereas for the alkaline phosphatase you can use the substituted 1, 2 dioxane phosphate and it is going to dephosphorylate substrate gives the uh, uh, give off the light. So, you can actually have the uh, do two different types of detections, you can have the colorometric detections or you can have the chemiluminescent detections. So, you wash the membrane with uh, TBS to remove the detergents, place the membrane onto the colorometric reagent and in the blot develop into 10 to 30 minutes. Stop the reaction by washing into the distilled buffer, air dry the membrane and photograph for permanent records. Then for the chemiluminescent detections, uh, the detection the different chemiluminescent reagents are given in the table right. Transfer the membrane onto the chemiluminescent reagents, soak the membrane for 30 seconds to 5 minutes, drain off the reagent and wrap the membrane into the plastic wrap, place it into a film cassette and expose the membrane to film to few seconds to the several hours. Then you can also have the fluorescent detection. So, secondary antibody labeled with the fluorescent dye and captured into the scanner can be also done. So, these are the some of the method uh, the steps what you are supposed to do when you are doing the western blotting. Uh, we are supposed to first run the SDS page followed by the transfer followed by the treatment with primary antibody followed by the treatment with the secondary antibody and then you are going to do a washing step and then you are going to do the development. So, these are the some of the very very crucial steps and you also require a lot of precautions while you are performing these steps. So, I would like to take you to my laboratory where the students are going to perform all these experiments all these steps and they are also going to discuss about the different types of uh, procedures. So, they are actually going to develop the blot with the help of the chemi reagents so that you will be familiar with the whole process and so on. In this video we will demonstrate you how to do a western blot and uh, uh, how to analyze the result using ACL, electrochemical uniform substrate. So, here what we will do, we have to run gel first, then we will transfer. The transfer method, how to do the transfer, we will show in this video. In previous video, we have already shown that uh, how to prepare a SDS page gel and how to run protein samples. So, in this video, particularly we are interested in uh, uh, factors associated with the western blotting. For doing western blot, we need membrane and uh, transfer buffer and uh, the transfer medium. Uh, this one is we use to transfer this 
gel to membrane so here membrane can be two kind one is nitrocellulose which has low uh, protein binding efficiency and hydrophilic in nature another membrane is pvdf this is hydrophobic membrane and uh, higher protein binding capacity so the processing for uh, western rat is different from different for uh, nitrocellulose and pvdf if you are using pvdf membrane we have to take we have to cut the part either if you have ready made uh, pre cut uh, pre cut blocks then no need if you have if you are taking from a uh, bundle you have to cut precisely how many wells you want so after that you have to label front on the blot where that front side can be used for transferring the protein and that can be used in previous step uh, further steps also like uh, uh, antibody incubation so here for uh, if you want to use pvdf membrane you have to charge with the methanol so since the pvdf is a hydrophobic membrane you cannot directly uh, transfer the transfer in the aqueous medium first you have to keep in uh, methanol for at least 20 minutes so after this can be called as charging so after this we will use that for uh, transfer so this is pre soaked in methanol and uh, equilibrated, equilibrated in uh, transfer buffer so here while doing uh, uh, transfer we need to consider few things the buffer always should be in chilled condition otherwise during this transfer at high voltage it will generate high temperatures so that may degrade your protein or decrease the efficiency of the transfer that's why we need to keep the buffer always in chilled condition and uh, let's start the procedure so uh, we need a pre-run gel so we already finished the gel running in addition to that we also need sponges which will give cushion to the uh, gel so that the gel may not uh, destroyed during the transfer so this is Here. this is the cassette we will use for the uh, transfer so this is uh, negative side of cassette and this is the positive side so we are going to keep gel on negative side and positive side the blood uh, membrane so when we when we apply voltage from this side to this side the negative protein it will be transferred it will be moved to positive side uh, positive side and it will be uh, captured in the uh, membrane so first for doing that these sponges we need to keep and also this uh, maybe give some uh, non specific uh, binding to membrane so what we will do we will put blotting sheets on top of this so after this you have to remove air bubbles if any present so once uh, you inserted the blotting sheet then you have to keep your gel so here we, we have to remember that gel after finishing the uh, SDS phase running you have to keep in uh, transfer buffer so that it will give identical condition or equilibration kind of thing during transfer so that uh, protein transfer may be easy So this is the gel. I'm keeping on the negative side. So after that, 
we have to overlay with the membrane. Next we have to remove any air bubbles if present. We have to overlay with another blotting sheet and remove the air bubbles. Each and every time when you introduce something you have to remove air bubbles. So this is the final sheet. So this is the positive side of the cassette, just have to keep like this, these are the screws, we have to tighten it up, then only the contact between the gel and the membrane will be sufficient to uh, get transferred. First you don't tight initially, you just keep and after that press the positive side of the cassette then tighten the screws so all these things should be done in the transfer buffer only unless specified so this is the chilled transfer buffer now we are going to do transfer pour sufficient buffer keep uh, this ice pack also if the chilling is not sufficient then uh, there may be heat generation so in order to prevent that we will use this ice pack so this will keep uh, the buffer cool till the transfer end of the transfer so uh, once that is over you directly take out the cassette and keep if there is a buffer insufficiency, you can add on top of that. Make sure that uh, the cassette completely submerged so that the transfer will be proper and uh, there is no air bubbles. So once the setup is over, now you can transfer Now transfer is going so how much voltage we need to give it depends on uh, uh, transfer to transfer it varies generally in our lab we will give at least uh, two hours of transfer at uh, 120 volts which is sufficient to uh, transfer even low molecular weight proteins also but uh, from instrument to instrument also it varies we need you needed to optimize before uh, doing uh, transfer after two hours we have to uh, remove the blood and uh, incubate with the uh, blocking buffer so we i am going to stop here remove the cassette keep the net ray remove the screws properly Gently remove the sponges. Take out the blood and keep it in blocking buffer. In this condition, we have to keep. If you are keeping it room temperature, it is for two hours at least. If you are keeping in four degrees Celsius, you can keep overnight the blocking buffer contains skim milk uh, or bsa along with the queen 20. the western dot transfer it's all depends on the efficiency how precisely you are doing the transfer for example you should not use your bare hands while handling the blood or uh, gel 
So whatever the proteins present on uh, your fingers, it will transfer into uh, gel or membrane, which will give high background during development of the blood. So always use gloves. Apart from that, uh, while handling the instrument, to make sure that there may be possibility of uh, 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 electricity, the shock uh, may happen sometime. So we have to, that time also we need to use gloves. And after uh, finishing, uh, finishing the transfer, you have to clean all the apparatus properly and dry it for the next time use. After the blocking of the membrane, we have to remove the membrane and incubate with the primary antibody without washing. The main purpose of the blocking is that it will occupy non-specific sites other than the respective protein so that when antibody comes it will bind to that specific protein and gives no nice. So after this we will incubate with the primary antibody for uh, overnight at 4 degrees Celsius then wash 3 times at least 15 minutes each with the uh, TBST buffer or PBST buffer and uh, again treat with incubate with the secondary antibody suitable secondary antibody for uh, 5 hours at 4 degrees Celsius or 2 hours at uh, 3 hours at room temperature after that we need to wash properly at least 3 times then we will develop with the develop the blood with the electrochemical limits and substrate in earlier uh, western blood how to do western blood video we showed how to transfer the proteins to uh, membrane so uh, we are we incubated with the uh, primary antibody following secondary antibody and wash with the now here we show how to develop a blood for developing a blood we need chemiluminescent substrate in most of the commercially available kits luminal is the one of the substrate we use for this purpose so luminal in presence of hydrogen peroxide and uh, peroxidase engine which present in the uh, secondary antibody uh, horse radius peroxidase conjugated secondary antibody this horse radius peroxidase converts luminal to uh, excited state luminal by deprotonating and oxidizing it. So this product, uh, this excited state product gradually uh, leaves the energy by releasing uh, luminescent photons. That light will be detected using this instrument. So uh, these are the commercially available uh, chemiluminescent substrate uh, solutions. So it is available from a wide range of companies. So we have to mix one is to one ratio. So we have to uh, take out the blood, drain the buffer, whatever present, properly. So after that, we keep blood in between uh, a plastic paper foils. Then we will take chemiluminescent substrate. So after that, you have to slowly press and remove air bubbles. This is the tray we use it for uh, developing the blood. So we have to open the system properly align the 
uh, tray and then shift black to the tail. Once it is over, you have to just close. Here we have to select application. We want blots that is chemiluminescent and uh, what exposure want? You have two options manual, auto. Auto in auto, two options are there optimal auto exposure, rapid auto exposure. We will choose optimal auto exposure. So you can uh, enlarge the uh, blood also. Once it is over, you just say. So this is the developed blood. So as we can see uh, the bands, the bands pattern. So this is how we develop uh, Western blood uh, through electrochemiluminescent substrate. So in this video, we demonstrated how to transfer uh, proteins to a blood and what are the precautions need to be taken while doing the Western blood and also how to develop the blood and what is the laying principle behind the developing the blood. So hope, I hope this will help you to understand the uh, basic outlay mechanism of how Western blood works. So uh, what these students have discussed, they have discussed about all these steps, they have discussed about how to transfer the proteins uh, onto the membrane, how to perform the primary antibodies, how to you perform the washing so that and what are the different precautions you should take while you are performing the western blotting and so on. So uh, these are the different steps what you are supposed to perform. Now uh, so what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the southern blotting, we have discussed about the northern blotting, we discussed about the western blotting. The purpose of these technique is very clear right for the southern blotting it is actually going to detect the DNA. So what what if you see if you try to correlate how you are actually going to answer the different questions with the help of the blotting techniques. So uh, the southern blotting is actually going to tell you that whether a particular gene is present or not right. So it is actually going to tell you about the, the gene is present or not. But whether this gene is actually expressing or not right. So whether this gene is performing the transcription or not that information you are going to get with the help of the northern blotting. So northern blotting is actually going to tell you whether the, this gene is forming the RNA or not right because there are genes which are also present but they may not be expressive genes they are may be only present into the genome simply by no other reason or they may be expressing but in that not in that condition in which uh, they may not be high scraping genes, they may be required for a specific purpose, so they may not be expressing. So the non blotting is actually going to tell you whether the RNA is uh, forming or not, so it is actually going to tell you about the transcriptional activity of that particular gene. So it is actually going to tell you the transcriptional activity of the gene. Then whether the gene is forming the protein or not right because there are proteins there are genes which are not expressing there are genes which are expressing but at the only at the RNA level they are not translating into the protein. So that information you will get by the western blotting. So uh, what you see is uh, so western blotting is going to tell you whether there is a translational activity of that. Uh, translational activity of gene is present or not ok. So what you see that with the help of these three uh, individual blotting techniques you can be able to get the complete information about a particular gene. You can actually be able to know how many number time this gene is appeared into the genome right whether the gene is present in genome or not number one, number two what is the location of this particular gene and how many times this gene is present into the genome. Then second question comes that whether this gene is forming the RNA or not, whether the gene is transcriptionally active or not and that information you will get from the northern blotting. And then whether the RNA what it is forming is expressing and being utilized by the protein uh, synthesis machinery 
to give you the protein that also can be answered with the help of the western blotting so all these uh, western all these blotting techniques are complementary to each other they are actually going to give you the in depth knowledge about that particular gene fragments and so on so with this uh, i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more uh, tech, uh, molecular biology techniques uh, so till then uh, we are going to conclude our lecture here thank you mm -hmm.